Hey everybody, we're back with another uh, critique episode. I'm joined by Adam and Jessica once more, and the theme this month is rooftop rumble. Yes. So basically, we're looking for like an illustration of some sorts that de depicts some sort of conflict on a rooftop. All right, let's go first with uh, Yuri being up first. So we're gonna open up waves of them so I don't crash my computer opening like all twenty of them. So Yuri's been. Working his ass off. We've seen this the last Holy couple smokes, weeks yeah. in the weekly hangout. And yeah, he's been really chipping away at this. Yeah, no kidding. This is great, though. I, I, I think he, he, he fixed a lot of the major things I had with it. So I'd like, if this is your first time seeing it, let's get your take. All right, yeah. Can I can I jump in first? Just yeah, a quick, go for it. quick comments? Okay. Uh, there's, it's, illustration-wise, it's lovely. There's a few compositional things that could really make a big difference. Uh, the fact that his butt is kind of sitting where that rooftop is looks mm -hmm. like he's sitting on it. So I would move it away and always leave space for movement. So, for instance, that axe that's about to come down, it's supposed to hack down on this, this droid or whatever. Keep a little bit of space above it so we, so it's not hitting the, the top of the composition. Yeah. That'll definitely help. I, I uh, agree. I'd add one last thing here, just compositionally, is... His target, that guy on the ground who's recoiling from the swing, uh, you have a deep blue against a deep blue background, and that kind of kills whole, it too. So be careful with your silhouettes. This yeah. whole thread is basically blue. Yeah, it kind of clumps up together. I think having separation there will definitely help. Separation there. These, all these three shapes should almost read a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like there's something about the positioning of that guy that's getting attacked. Um, it makes it feel very like, like it, first of all, you got this really like vertical line going down that one side of the picture, but then he also feels kind of like crammed into the corner, like he's getting cut off um, mm -hmm. from yeah, the this... bottom and the side. So he kind of feels like he's just kind of like sticking up this... in the corner of the picture, as opposed to like, you know, a design shape inside of the image. Here is it? Unless this is like an album cover. I recommend going with a vertical or a horizontal composition because you could add real estate on either a side or like a bottom to really frame these characters in a much more natural way. Mm -hmm. Square just but, always can like add extra problems for the you know no reason. Yeah, I think you've, I think you've done a really nice job though with like the atmosphere and the color. Like you could feel like the depth of space in in the sky and stuff around yes. the buildings, and that feels really nice. Really good job, Yuri. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna be the, the, the time. <laughs> as everybody knows I'm gonna be the time watcher. Keep everybody moving. So, uh, <laughs> we would love to spend 20 minutes on each of these. Oh yeah, easily. All right. Next up. Let's see my. Okay. Here we go. Oh, this is very colorful by Alex. Hmm. Yeah. I like the lighting in this one too. The nice drop shadows look really nice. I I still think even for like some of the material referenced. That this still might be a saturation overload. Mm -hmm. A bit, yeah. Yeah. Like it, it can be pretty intense. Well, for me, I would even say for me it's the the green against the blue. Yeah. Like the blue and red feel cohesive, but something about that green against the teal sky isn't working. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's almost creating like this neon like discomfort for the eye. Yeah. Um and it, it doesn't feel like it's it's integrated into the color scheme of the rest of the image. Yeah, I I would still tone down that that particular like a blue or add more of like the magenta range, you know, into that to to kind of c calm that down, you know, mm -hmm. just like a little bit. Like this should do it, but it made it more blue. But I think just desaturating that a little bit altogether, you know, would really help. Yeah, and even if you look at some of the the color reference he has, there are areas that. Um the saturation does fade out as well. So even something like that, which is like a lot more tame, can, can help with like the green and stuff. I wanted to ask you guys something. How do you feel about, I'm fine with a, a center composition, but how do you feel about this one long chimney element going all the way up the middle like that? that that's what's not settling entirely well with me. Um, I Normally I would say I, I'm, I'm, I have a bit of an aversion to over symmetry it's not totally offending me this time around i think what i when i look over at alex's thumb over up on the uh, over up on the top right the the moon or whatever you had behind the character helped to kind of silhouette him a little bit better mm -hmm. um i find that 
knocked the symmetry off slightly. That could help. But it, yeah, I don't know. I'm on it the does fence. seem like it was originally intended to be a knight piece. And I think given that he's kind of robbing places, I think mm. actually this this would serve the narrative better as a nighttime piece. And it would actually yeah. tone yeah. down a lot of those colors just a bit as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think in that piece as well, the, the symmetry is slightly off. Like, you yep. still get the sense of this vertical shape in the center of the composition, but it's cr- slightly crooked, which I think adds to the precarious feeling of the character as well. Yeah. yeah. And keep in mind your time of day consistencies. You're showing very long cast shadows in a lot of places, like for added drama, but you're also depicting a very high noon, even early morning sky, which, or you know, late morning. Which could, you know, you could tone down that sky, add a little bit more purples in it, and that would be consistent. Purples and pinks, even, would be more consistent with the lighting you're showing in the foreground, and I think that would help a bit as well. So, but great job. Yeah. A simple, simple, less, you know, a little, little, you know, it's not as climactic as it has to be, which is great, because it's a little more subtle. Yeah. Yeah, it's, It's a fun idea. I like it. All right, Carmelo, you're up next. I believe there was slight comment when I was reading it says uh, yeah didn't like finish like a hundred percent I guess but yeah let's take a look at this all right I I like the figure that something about the design of the figure is really nice I I like the shapes of the composition you know as as a whole I think those are really really cool yeah but I mean I it's hard to kind of tell what exactly the situation is because I mean it kind of looks like I mean this is some kind of spiritual character, but it mm-hmm. also kind of the way it's a standing straight, but also like jutting off the building, you know, like mm-hmm. that. I yeah. don't know. It, it there's just a lot of things I'm asking too many questions that I think should be a little more obvious. Yeah. I feel like it's it's meant to be exaggerated this this yeah. pose of the figure standing off to the side, but it's doing so in, in a way that feels like. Like it's ringing the alarm bells in the brain when you're looking at it that something's wrong, um, because I think too, especially because you've you've chosen to have the figure coming off from the building in a really weird angle, but mm-hmm. then you've also made the figure be basically straight up and down in the composition, which the brain mm-hmm. is reading as like stability. Yeah, like it's not actually stable. It's very precarious, and so, so I, that I think yeah, slightly like you know, well, rotating the the canvas actually less may mm-hmm. help you know what you're you know what you're trying to do like see if it was something more yeah. like that yeah and you that, had a yeah. ver- you had a vertical composition that would probably feel a lot more natural yeah mm-hmm. i'd also say just from a color perspective i can see this that there was an idea where the character is desaturated next to a colorful red sky um but i think one of the things that creates a bit of confusion is the 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 platform or the rooftop that he's on and the road are kind of halfway yeah. so you kind of have this kind of transition from saturated to mid to to desaturated and we lose the intention i think graphically you know if you wanted to go with kind of a sin city type of idea that mm-hmm. you kind of have to commit to the saturated desaturated yeah like there's a, a bright green a car way in in the corner of the, the yeah canvas. it's not like helping, that yeah. that's bringing the viewer's eye down to that this is the only green thing and the green exactly. is complementary to that red so that yeah. that green is like stealing way more thunder than it wants to yeah yeah, yeah i agree i'd get rid of the green altogether yeah yeah. Awesome idea, though. Very, very yeah. creative, though. I love the, I love your the boldness of this. It's Keep really, reading, uh, frame break. It'll serve yeah. you well. <laughs> All right, what All do we right, got next? Next up, Adrian. Adrian. Adrian is back. Never fails. Is this is like a fairly similar setup to the one I did. I don't even have to see the name anymore. I recognize it. Yeah. So he's really got an iconic stuff. I love that. I love this setup, Adrian. You know I do. This is the same setup I use. Let's have a couple guys going at it on a rooftop Net. in the rain, bright signs, you know, reflections. We're on the same wavelength with this one. <laughs> yeah. This is cool. Um, I think you did a really good set, uh, job with the sense of, like, light and moisture. Um, that's reading really well. Yeah. I think that the figure in the corner of the foreground... Um, like compositionally, it feels very like um, separated from each other, and mm-hmm. the the figure actually almost becomes this flat graphic shape as opposed to like part of a, an immersive scene. Yep, that's what I had to deal with. I had to move my guy, 
you know, in a frame so we could see the full context of the dudes kind of going at it. Like where it's just like, ah, yeah, it's a massive shape, but it's like a, almost like a massive graphic shape in a way. And mm -hmm. I think it works, you know, like when you're looking at the scene as a whole from like a thumbnail view, but uh, as we come in, you know, if we're going to like really blow this up and look at it as like an illustration, I think you need a lot harder edges in certain mm -hmm. places because everything here is so soft and lost where there's yeah. very little that's hard and firm and hard and firm you know the the aggressiveness of that can really add to the dramatic action see it looks like the arm is coming over in front of the body but until mm -hmm. i just blew this up there i just thought this sword was an arm off of here yeah. like there's no form at all it's you could really have you can really play a lot with the the elements that are on here mm -hmm. and i uh, think too it's oh i'm sorry go ahead no no go ahead please I was just going to say that the contrast between the farther away figure being really soft and misty and then this this flattened, very graphic shape of the foreground character, that contrast isn't working. Like, I feel like it should go one direction or the other. They both mm -hmm. should have, like, a really intense graphic quality yeah. or they both should have kind of that soft um, dimensionality to them. Yeah, absolutely. You know what else I would, just to add to that, is um, there is a video I wanted to draw your attention to. It's... Um, the YouTube channel Every Frame of Painting, and he did a video about Akira Kurosawa. Where he talks about adding movement, ad awesome. atmosphere, rain, and stuff like that to a to a piece. And you want that environmental element to add to it, to contribute, but not to control it. And I think the rain is so overpowering that that's one of the things muting a lot of your clean edges. Yeah, it's a bit heavy. And you could also use it and give it a bit of an angle to actually add movement to a static waiting pose right because they're both standing very still but that diagonal line can add a lot of dynamic to the piece itself the best right? expression of movement is a subtle expression of movement et voila that's what i i downloaded the rain pack adrian from photobash.org and i just like dropped the, the photo onto my picture and then you know switch the layer mode and i got instant rain like that so yeah. work, it worked out for my image and it has like a 300 pictures of rain so you can really pick which ones are mm. in focus which ones are out of focus which ones have direction versus which ones are you know a little bit more random but so yeah, yeah. That, there's there's a reference for everything out there very, Jerry. Very cool. all right all right now very different feel what we got going on here here we go we got the uh hmm. the who's color was the first thing i noticed was color. The, yeah. the color was a bit desaturated it was a bit uh watered down it was lacking a bit of uh punch to it because there's a lot of uh, value contrast but it's lacking a bit of color contrast in there that's the first thing that hit me for me it was textures i feel like um like the all the different surfaces lack different texture or mm. reflect I, and i might but, even be going somewhere similar with that because my my thing is that it feels un, unfinished would be like yeah. one because yeah. right you see a little bit of detail and, and clarity in there but then you see elements like the roof in the pipe where you could still see the line art but you can't mm -hmm. see like the line art throughout the whole thing so therefore yeah. it feels like almost like a first color wash over a piece of line art because like some parts are painted out and then other parts yeah aren't. yeah yeah uh, yeah you know what look at you you've got some textured wall with a very strong line the, the the box with the line the characters with the line and then you have these very painterly clouds and yeah. smoke so there's, yeah, it's kind of committing to cartoon or realism. And the inclusion or exclusion of line kind of defines that. So yeah. if you had just committed to the cartoon, we wouldn't be questioning it so much, right? Or vice versa, or getting rid of that contour line. The, uh, sure. the other major thing going on here is the lighting. It, mm. it looks way too made up and it's inconsistent. Because like mm -hmm. you have various elements again, it's hard to tell at this earlier stage that like it seems like th there's like shadows. I think getting pushed like this, like right. That's the like mm -hmm. there's a di very direct light source right here, but it's also not existing. Because you could see like, right, he's got a long shadow. This has got a long. Sh this has all got shadow, and this is mm -hmm. this is lit up like there's a light source right here shining at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, very tricky thing. But yeah, the lighting isn't quite there i would say this all would probably be better in shadow with the, the sun getting lower like off screen you know you could you can kind of like add a lot more subtlety to that i mean this is yeah. a great way to frame that character's face mm -hmm. I, i'm 100 i like the overall setup of the composition but the yeah. lighting still is looks way too made up yeah 
And I was going to say, too, about the composition is a lot of it actually feels really well designed, I feel like, except for the doctor hiding in the corner. Um, something about that. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like the, the, the relationship between the girl and the Cybermen back there look really, that all looks really good and it's reading really well and the perspective um, feels appropriate. But something about him in the corner, he feels like he's the wrong size. He feels like he's not in perspective. He also feels kind of like flattened against the wall. I think um, this would be better without him. Yeah, yeah. Unless you find a much better way to depict him in that corner. Because I like the idea of it. The idea is fun, but it's not reading yet. Yeah. All right, next up. Awesome job, Jerry. Yeah, very nice. And Lin's, Lin's, great storytelling, Lindsay too. Lindsay Chambers. He's, Lindsay's been in some of the Hangouts the last couple of weeks, too. Oh, wow, okay. Nice. So, Complex. That That's the name of the deal here. It's, there's a lot going on, I would say. And okay. I think you got to get some stuff to read. You did better with your edges than that last... The, your initial stuff that I saw. I think you've done way better with your your actual edge control, I think, but the problem now is grouping and separating values, so mm -hmm. there's a very clear intent and focus. Yeah, and I think this is, like, um, like again, like, needing that sense of, um, like, what is the heart of the piece, like, what is the, the focal point of the piece, mm -hmm. and my eyes kind of getting dragged all over the place. I feel like the dark silhouette of the guy falling um, in the bottom left side should be the, the focal point, or mm -hmm. what that's what's meant to be, but I'm also very drawn to the the guy with the purple flames around him in the background, mm -hmm. and then just those bright streaks of light from uh, the machines or robots. Yeah. Uh, so like my eyes like getting pulled all over the image. Yeah, I would also just compositionally uh, be careful because you have that falling character up on the top left. It looks like he's landed on a rooftop, uh -huh. right? So I'd move that, I'd get rid of that building so that it, you can tell he's free-falling in that shot. Yeah, I'm trying to separate out some of these elements, which I imagine on your file you do, but like in here it's so misty and, and like light, like you can really get in there with like some yeah, firm mm -hmm. freaking shapes and values mm -hmm. and really do some work with how these, how your scene is, you know, working. You know, something like that. And then see like you have like a ton of noise down there. And you have to ask yourself, you know, what is this scene about? If it's not really about that little building down there with the light, you can absolutely drown a lot of that information out. Particularly like right here, if you got a, if this character, it, again, that that's where see, now I'm getting confused because I'm not sure what these things are fighting. Mm. Right? Is it this object down here they're fighting? Mm, yeah, that's a good point. See, guys, clarity. Yeah, that, that, that's what you robot. have to we have to uh, sort out on the next go is make the story so in their face that we're not questioning these things not just us but like anybody you want to because like the storytelling element is like okay i see like there's robots there's like jumpers mm -hmm. and there is conflict here but i'm not sure who's on what side and i'm not sure who's fighting who that sort of thing you want obvious yeah the impression I got was that the robots were fighting the the falling figures simply because the one of they have like these purple plasma beams and then one of the guys is like on fire with this yeah. purple plasma. So my brain had made the connection that they were fighting each other, but I might be wrong. You know what's confusing? It's the fact that the falling characters and the the opposing robots both have that dotted design element to it, which makes them look like they're on the same team. Well, that's what I assume. That's what's confusing. I realized I I didn't realize I thought they were all falling. I didn't realize that they were against each other. I think that might be playing into it too. Design yeah. language, uh, Lindsay, work on that. Separate if they're if they are together or if they're not. I mean, I would say they they have to be on the same side because they've got the same colors and the same. I don't know. Well, but they're there's who at they, each who's other. who's fighting them if that is the case, Lindsay. Right. Is what yeah. we'd want to like. Who are they actually fighting here? That's what's not clear. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a you know complex, very dynamic shot. I'd still simplify a lot of that out, but mm -hmm. overall, you know work on the design aspects of, of the uh, storytelling. I also just wanted to say that that guy falling in the ground, like the way that's painted is really nice. Like mm -hmm. there's some really nice like atmosphere yeah. and like silhouetting of the form and stuff there. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yep. All right. So I'm going to hit pause and then reopen. Yeah. Hey, we're <laughs> back with the next round. 
So first up, file name presentation. All right, but you got your name. I'm sorry, I cannot read your name. Right, Handok. I'm terrible with it. I'm that, that sounded. That sounded feasible. Handok. All right. So you got some drama going on here. I like, I like that you're uh, influenced by these simple kind of graphic. Uh, traditional illustrative posters. I, I'm like a big sucker of those. I'd mm. also say to don't hesitate from getting a lot of real world reference to add to that though, like inspiration and referencing two separate things. And I think you need to go almost like both hand in hand because I, I would say like my gut reaction was this is like everything in it feels a little too made up and too imaginative. Like there's nothing. Uh, not grounding a lot of the idea here and and it gets harder to push beyond this without that really uh, good drawing underneath all this and that research that that takes to pull an image like this off yeah I definitely like when I looked at it especially when I was in a thumbnail stage I really really like the thumbnail and mm -hmm. like it, it popped out at me as one of the ones that I really liked right off the bat but as it, it when it's blown up then like you lose all this detail um, and the, the strengths of the thumbnail end up not being, you know, carrying through in the larger size where you see like this creature up above um, that doesn't feel finished. It doesn't feel rendered. Mm -hmm. Like the, the shape of it is, is interesting, but it needs to get pushed further into being more realistic. Yeah, because I don't know if these are arms. I don't know if these are wings. I don't know if that's an eye or if that's a mouth. It, you're, you're, it looks very unfinished, I guess, in that in that respect. But by contrast, I feel like the figure in the foreground has like a really nice, like it's very simplistic, it's very controlled, but it has just enough detail for the form to read really well. Yeah, yeah, like that. That's like night and day. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm you because of that contrast, yeah. That, that I also makes cut off a, a ton on the the bottom. I I thought it was too long. It was almost unnecessarily long. You know what I would even do, Tyler, is is add a bit more of the dark platform below her yeah. to push well, her into the Well, that's that was my original goal, and then I was just looking. I was looking up at this, and I was like, yeah, yeah, like because either way, yeah, like this guy's like chopped off at the waist at the bottom of the comp. So, mm -hmm. if you look at the thumbnail on the bottom right, the the piece by Amir Zand. Um, you'll notice that the characters have been pushed up into the rule of thirds. So don't forget your rule of thirds because you don't want to cram your character at the bottom of a page. Kind of cancels them out, right? Yeah. So pushing pushing the character up and adding more of the the the, the wall, you're helping to push them up into that rule of thirds a little bit better. It'll feel mm -hmm. better. Yeah. And so, it'll yeah. it'll still read as like this broad space between them. Mm -hmm. um, it still has that same feeling that you had initially. Um, it's just more controlled. Yeah, and it, just be careful with your values. Your character, if you look at the, the the monster against that dark background, it cancels it out. It cancels out that silhouette. So try to keep the silhouette of those characters reading nice. Get some good contrast in there. Help to define it a bit better. Yeah, I would even say like the, the figure could stand, or not the figure, but the yeah. monster could stand to actually just be drawn, like to really for your sake to have a good sense of like what the shape of this is, mm -hmm. and then be able to go in and render it and give it that three-dimensional... Yeah, the, the artist has to know more than what they're presenting to the viewer. And since a lot of this is implied, right, heavy atmosphere, volumetric lighting, the things that are in focus, they need to be, like, well articulated for that contrast to work. Yeah, and especially because that girl is kind of simplified, I feel like it's even more important that that monster has mm -hmm. um, more detail. All right, hero. Next up, starting mm. the stopwatch. All right, here. This is cool. That's mm -hmm. cool. This reads really nicely, too. Yeah. Um, tangents. Again, look at your piece objectively. You'll notice that the dragon's tail looks like it's coming out of the barrel of the gun, right? So be careful with that. Make sure there's a separation yeah. so our depth doesn't get messed that, up. That's there, a massive right? one for an illustration like this. Yeah. Just move mm -hmm. your character back an inch, and it, it'll solve that right there. Or, or I think you can even have, have the tail wrap around so it kind of like crosses behind the silhouette of the figure. Yeah. Because yeah. that'll give it more of a sense of depth when you have silhouettes crossing like that. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if like the wing up, something something over there like that. And I don't know. I'd play mm. with it a little bit. That could be fun. Or too. like, you know, mm -hmm. even, even down like that. Or, I don't know. I'm terrible with winged things. 
But <laughs> I, I would say, like, from a composition, there might be something else really, like, worth mentioning here is, like, right, the focal situation is right here. Yeah. Everything important in this picture is right here. So it leads, leads me to think, like, what is the whole point of this entire part of the canvas? Mm -hmm. Like, that's a lot of dead space that not necessarily, there's nothing in here adding to what is going on here. And it, and it almost like maybe this would be better if this piece, this guy itself, the dragon on with the building, like what if that was like more opposition? Like this whole part of the canvas would just be like over here. It seemed like that would be a better use of like the space if we're going for a, right, a, a horizontal format, right? Like mm -hmm. this is like, he's on some yeah. building like right there. Again, okay. rule of thirds, right? Good old rule of thirds. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it never fails. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, this line is, like, on a third. Th this is on a third, and even this is. But then there's, like, nothing over here that's adding to this. It's almost too too heavy-handed, too weighted toward and one side. That, al that also would actually solve another problem where you have this, like, really strong or vertical shape of the skyscraper directly in the center of the canvas, mm -hmm. which is... Hel which is causing the problem to be even worse where it's literally cutting the canvas in half and the other half is not important yeah mm -hmm. so if you move that over then you're not going to have that like gateway to the rest of the painting like blocking it off yeah yeah and then there's like you know, they get the tangent there with like the wing so there's that tangent as you made so just watch and plan your composition very thoroughly and look at it you know abstractly in terms of like what has weight, you know, what what's important, how how are things abstractly dividing up, you know, in your scene, and you know how does that, you know, with no detail or you know almost against a blank background, like how does that look? How does the how does the flow, you know, work? So see, like I'm drawing that line, but there's nothing actually over here pushing us back up there. That's just yeah. a habit I have. So you'd mm -hmm. want something over here to counterweight these two if they're staying there, and something that's pushing up there. <laughs> Yeah. I was just thinking, actually, like, if you had, like, a larger dragon in the foreground with the head pointing up towards them, kind of like Jurassic Park style yeah. coming in behind the guy, then you could actually make a lot of use of that negative space on the, the right this side. This guy could be yeah. a background element. You Really what you just need to draw, Hero, is a massive dragon head right here coming down. Hmm. Rawr, like, <laughs> that's like yeah, the worst like, like I've ever drawn. Up, like, coming up from the bottom of the image, like, wrapping around into the image. Yep, yep, just like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Think. And that would solve all the composition problems. You guys draw dragon heads. I'm not raw like that. We'll get some, <laughs> some horns and an that, eye. That is scary. I'm sorry. I'm terrible. That's why I don't have any of those in my portfolio. I can't draw them. <laughs> you said it first, but ditto, yes. But I actually think, like, the, um, the buildings and stuff, like, a lot of this is really well painted. It's really, like, the, the textures and stuff are really mm -hmm. pleasant. Yeah, I mean, you you put some time like rendering is not your your biggest deal here, which if you slap all that fancy rendering and lighting on top of like a really solid foundation in terms of the construction, you'll be you'll be all set. Yep, yep. Art Goose. So, Mr. <laughs> Goose. This is cool too. Start the time. All right, start us off. Well, I, initially, I just, I really like it. Um, it's very simple, but it's effective. I love the, like, it, the soft edges of the moon and the, the stuff around him. But I'm finding at some point, I'm, I start wanting something to be more defined and hard-edged. Yeah. I feel like it's, it, it stays too loose, uh, too consistently through all of the painting. No, I 100% agree. And I also wasn't sure whether or not, in terms of clarity... Whether that was a moon or a hole in like a cavern, like is this a nighttime scene or is this yeah. like inside a cave? I'm I'm pretty sure he's like on a rooftop and the moon yeah. behind him, and it looks like there's some sort of like firelight coming from underneath lighting him. Because I think that's a building. He's on top of a building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. With the cliff, kind of like there's a cliff around him or something like some rocky cliff. Yeah. See, again, yes. use of space. If he's over here, you can add something over here, you know, or even further enhance the movement 
of this but like as mm -hmm. this is right all the focus is right here and all the all the directional kind of energy and flow right is it's like with the character right looking out of the composition exactly yeah everything's yeah. here and out you know yeah. like here and, then, and out so all this is dead and nothing's like hmm yeah yeah yeah, you always want to lead your you always want to lead the audience's eye into the page unless you were you were preparing people for something to come in from that empty side of the page, right? Somebody's going to ambush them from the back or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the other thing too, I would really take advantage of. You've really set up a beautiful opportunity to add some nice moonlight rim light to the back of the dragon, considering he's got warm light on the front. And have that cool yeah. moonlight hitting the back could really create a nice pop. So yeah, like with just these, some food for thought there, yeah. Yeah, like I, I the, the moon as an element, and it's not working right there as it as it is. So that that would have to get moved, and then you can really define the back of the form, mm. and not with like that. You know, we've talked about this in the past many times, like not like the crappy like silhouetted rim lighting, but define the form mm -hmm. of the creature with the rim light reaching over you know affecting all the muscles and the structure like that's a really good opportunity you know yeah. that to, yeah that would really add a light and nice. the, the wings feel like they need work too since they're really you know they're they're a prominent part of this design but it feels like you're compensating for the lack of like how they work or or the research and reference that's really required for them because like they're kind of like gnarly and they're just kind of like there and they feel too small, actually. For Way the too small. Size of the figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Also, is that a, a shadow of a guy at the bottom? I of think the there movie? is a hint of a shadow here. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm not sure. Yeah, that there's not enough contrast with that. I like the idea of it, but my brain is also saying that that wouldn't make sense if mm -hmm. the, the the creature is being lit by the fire. My brain is saying the fire is pretty close to the creature. So where is the guy standing? The scale and the, the depth is like mm -hmm. causing issues in my brain as to whether that makes sense or not. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the idea, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it is it is really like eye-catching. Like the simplicity of it is actually really nice. Yeah, we really noticed it when, we, when Tyler put them on the page. Mm-hmm. Rooftop brawl, we got Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> the fabulous Spider-Man. I don't see enough Spider-Man art. Here we go. So this is from Bartek. Yeah, Bartek. Okay, awesome. This is cool. Well, give it All right. Wow. I like I like the breaking the frame. That's kind of fun. Um, yeah, I mean this is a nice little them. spread you got mm, here. Yeah, it overlaps the the black bars that's cool there's something that looks weird though about like the perspective choice of the buildings though like i don't know it just looks the buildings feel warped they don't actually feel a little square. bit yeah yeah it's either like you i i can't pin it right here because like the format is so extravagant but it's either like you chose like something way too wide of a lens or i think that's what it is or you know the other problem would be like you chose way too narrow but this doesn't feel like a narrow i think that the lens itself feels way too wide on the buildings Cause like this just kind of goes off like that like it almost doesn't feel like a 90 degree i don't know yeah it feels like those rectangles that are like kind of like to the side i don't know yeah, what that's it, like but I mean, something, you, something that's kind of throwing me off but i don't know if it's like more of like for this type of image it's more effective um but as an illustrator i'm looking at it the way that the i don't know what it's called the thing that the, the goblin is writing the it's way that that's like a very vertical line like cutting through the image mm -hmm. um, is kind of throwing me off because it's like I look at the image with Spider-Man, then that stops my eye, then I look at the image of the goblin guy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's a way to like kind of turn it so it's more of a diagonal or find something to kind of break through the shape a little bit so to help the eye move to that half of the image. You know what I'm? It's funny. It's it's funny you're mentioning that. I'm. I think I notice what's going on here with the piece. Instead of approaching this uh, uh, in terms of perspective, angling things in certain ways, what what Bartek has done is he's at his images. These separate elements are actually quite two dimensional, and quite face on. But then he oriented them, right? Mm -hmm. So like the buildings are just rotated to the side. That that pod, the 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 um, 
thing that the that the goblin's riding is actually we're looking at it quite straight on, but he's just tilted it to the side. So mm-hmm. that kind of messes with our sense of perspective in that in that case. It's a bit confusing. The, the lighting as well with some of them. I mean, I know it's rather implied, right? It, it's the lighting is itself is like on the right side, mm-hmm. but then a lot of things feel inconsistent with the lighting. Like there would be like a cast shadow right underneath. You know, the head or be casting a shadow on the armor, right? That would be in shadow. But, like, all of this, like, if this is a, 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 a plane facing this way, all of this would be in shadow right there. Probably a good portion of, of this would just be fainter with, you know, ambient light. So, I don't know. This is a very complex scene. So, as you can see, like, the problem solving that you would have to go through to really make this. Like at at probably the level you want to get it to, it just requires a lot of planning, a lot of reference as well. Uh, yeah. I I think like a lot of the highlights, for example, on Spider Man are blown out to like this pastel. So like you tinted everything rather than straight up lit it. Like you just added you had the red, so you added white to it. You had the blue, so you just added white to it. Everything mm-hmm. feels just tinted in this, not rather like it's like properly uh, uh, lit uh, from a painting perspective. Yeah, and one other thing, too, is, like, I feel like um, you haven't decided who's the star of the show here, whether it's Spider-Man or the Goblin guy, and so they're both competing with each other for attention. Uh, yeah, you, right, because of the it's, format as well. Your eyes just go, like, you know, almost, like, evenly. It's like, mm-hmm. I think adding a flow and a direction, you know, with all that would, would really yeah. add to it. Yeah, choose which one you want the eye to go to. First, yeah, just prioritize mm-hmm. things. All right, this is awesome. I like, uh, you know, Ming's back here from, I think he did really good last last month. So this is cool. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. look at the storytelling going on. Going in yeah. There. I love it. It's the after the brawl. That's a very good. I, I actually learned this from Carla Ortiz a couple of years back. She was talking about action poses and getting impact from an action pose. And she was mentioning how a lot of people tend to capture the moment that action happens, like when a fist hits a face or when the two swords clang. And you get a lot more impact, not only action-wise, but narratively at the directly before and after. So the anticipation of the punch or the aftermath of getting hit. Or narratively, I l- what really works here, I take away for everybody, is how it's after the brawl. The brawls already happened, but we're seeing the the bloody aftermath of what's happened, and that's very powerful, right? Yeah, so and then something using, you can play with. using the body language language of the you know the slumped figure, the the shoulder yeah. head down, like it communicates so much emotion and yeah. storytelling. Mm-hmm. Very very cool. I know the body's straight on. I I think one of the things that might be I'm um, I'm having a bit of a hard time is. There's a little bit of contrast, maybe a bit of that atmospheric fog around the figures and a little bit more lighting to help to define the figures. We're, we're losing them a bit in that. Again, like that earlier piece, the rain is a bit overpowering and we lose some of the some of the readability of the piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It may could be because too they submitted it at a much lower resolution than it actually is. So this is, okay. blow, this is blown up right now 200%. So mm-hmm. that, uh, okay. the, I'm sure that that's like what a lot of that leads to. Okay. Uh, I do think the color choices. Yeah, I mm-hmm. love the actual like setup of this. It's like really cool. I love the, the composition stuff. I, I was doing research too because I did a very similar scene where right if this this is on a building and these are the letters, uh, I don't know if like these would end up being better if these were just a dark graphic silhouette, right? Because the light is facing outwards toward the street. Mm-hmm. So like when I was doing my lights for my sign, like yeah, it's like I, I originally thought it would be like this, right? But it, actually there would be like a black plate at least around probably most of that i mean i don't know i'm not like a i'm not like an expert on signage or or roof (laughs) roof matters for that fact but i don't know like these do add a nice contrast to it but they might be like overpowering compared to like what what's actually happening there whereas like maybe if this your letters were all in your graphic like that and then you blew back the negative space where the city is a bit further back and use atmosphere like that. It'd be mm. a bit of a different approach, but I think it might be worth exploring. Yeah, I'd be curious to see that. Because right, because the, these also would have, unless they're like right up against it, which sometimes I guess they could be. But from what I was looking at, there's like little spokes that go out, you know, to the plate that I just drew, 
and then just because you have such an immense attention to detail everywhere mm-hmm. else in the scene, mm-hmm. like you got the stickers on the vent, and you got like the yeah. clamps on it, like you got you have the the blood and the the textures, so it seems like maybe something like that, or maybe even I know that 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 doesn't need anything because it's on this, but right that would kind of go like that, and then I think that face back, and then I'd blow back the sky. Mm-hmm. keep that contrast right here i don't know but it's it's really good and it's a very yeah. complex scene so and you really nailed the story too yeah, yeah i mean this yeah. is this is gorgeous like that that setup right there like, like yeah. this is how you do a center composition yeah a lot of, a lot of, yeah. asymm- a lot of asymmetry it, it still feels very dynamic and balanced Oh, and a little mention to Dutch angle. This is we were looking at angled pieces before, and with mm-hmm. the Spider-Man, a Dutch angle is a storytelling element. It's not just to add movement to nothingness, and it sh- it should create a sense of foreboding or anticipation in a piece. Don't just throw in angles everywhere arbitrarily because it doesn't actually. It's just a way of kind of trying to add something to nothing. So remember that there's a point to Dutch angles. Okay. Now, here is the essence of a rooftop rumble. Here we go. Awesome <laughs> stuff, Jordan. Hmm. This, reminded, this is reminding me of something. I can't put my finger on it. Huh. Yeah, it's like a posse chase. Oh, yeah, and they've got the cash and some guys coming to get Okay, cool. I, I think with this, it's still like uh, many of the others. My initial reaction, it, it feels a bit unfinished. So I want to know, like, from, from, I guess, that perspective, is it unfinished because you ran out of time? Is it because unfinished you didn't know how to push it further? Is it unfinished because it, it lacked certain... Yeah, may, I guess it would only go to those two categories, I suppose. Yeah. T- time, or you just didn't know? Because, yeah, a lot of the, the surface textures and stuff aren't there. A lot of it just feels flat and cel-shaded, but then when you look at the figures, there's an intention to try and create three-dimensionality. Mm-hmm. But this is the lighting I think done a little bit, a little bit softer, a little bit better than compared to um, the one we previously looked at that was actually set up fairly similarly, right? There's not like a blasted piece of light coming from like that would exist way out of frame. Mm-hmm. So, I, if I put on my Jessica hat here, I, I notice <laughs> Jessica's always always notices. She's always the first to notice like, the graphic read of something, right? And I think one of the things that that keeps popping out to me is how you have bold, dark forms behind your foreground characters. So that wall that that girl is crouched next to is not helping. I would move that over to so that she reads better. You know, like that way she the dark coat and dark hair against the dark wall kind of cancels her out a little bit. So just something to keep her out for. Another thing, too, is I'm noticing that all of the figures are kind of the same value range. They're all yeah. the same level of darkness, which is flattening out the image. Like, as the buildings go back in space, I can see that you've tried to lighten them. But the figures, even those smaller figures mm. um, that are supposed to be the farthest back, are just as dark as the foreground. Yeah. yeah. And so that's bringing them way more forward than they should be. And kind of competing with everything else. Yeah, you can subdue a lot of that down there, so they're not competing with this character. Mm-hmm. And I think you could even get away with more of that effect on the buildings as well. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. It, it'll help create a sense of like atmosphere, like the air actually exists between you and those objects. So, Jordan, see how here you have. I just wanted to point this out. Um, see, like. A lot of these surfaces, it's I don't think it's just a matter of material, but it's how lighting affects the materials as well. A lot of it feels undesigned, undefined, like it's like a very soft first color wash sort of pass. If I just bring up like a, a standard typical piece of like rooftop reference, there's a lot going on. Like there's water stains, there's damage, there's weathering, there's different materials for different elements up there. This is the the stuff that a lot of, if I've said a lot of people's, if it looks unfinished at all, it's certain like a lot of these seem like they didn't make it, you know, their way into the scene so that it has that context that mm-hmm. really just enhances that overall authenticity of it, of the scene, and of, like the subject matter. Mm-hmm. See, like this is all just like one kind of note of blue. Like you have like blue, yeah. lighter blue, lighter part of the blue. Like it, it, color is a spectrum. You can put greens, reds, and you know, of course, with control. Um, but it, it feels like I guess way too monochromatic in, in that regard as well. If I'm just talking about color. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and even even without the the color, even if the entire image was monochromatic, it still lacks those details, those yeah. surface textures, the cracks, yeah. the chips, the water stains, all of the things that'll give the object a feeling of you know being a real object. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. If you compare, if you just look at what we have on the page, the 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 dragon and the gun gunner at the top middle. The uh, the brawl on the left, the dragon up on the top right. Notice that the pieces that stand out are the ones that have that surface detail, that texture and that wear and aging to it. Whereas when it's lacking, it feels very flat. And that can be used by photo or a hand paint. But sure, it, when yeah. you have stuff like just blank, it looks unresolved. Is what it, yeah. And I go over this almost daily with my design students. Is like If you're drawing an interior of a wall or, or even like a floor, but you don't have anything on the floor, is that floor marble is it tile is it ceramic is it carpeted you know like you have to put that in your pieces Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, one last thing like from a design element there's something about the positioning of the figures this guy in the middle jumping with the sword he feels really crowded i feel like that sword is really close to the guy's head i feel like the hand pointing at his foot is really close to his foot Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like he's getting like hemmed in from all sides, which for some reason is very distracting in this image. Yep. Yep. I think yeah, that, he that could have like a little bit of space and then subdue those. Even just make him smaller, like he's farther back, or just move the foreground figures a little farther away from him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, awesome job. I mean, it's certainly challenging subject matter. Uh, it got us talking, didn't it? For sure. All right, let me hit pause. Okay, that one was a. Hey everybody, we're back for the third and final segment. All right, so let's start off with uh, Kiko Art. Kiko says that they weren't finished here. All right. I can see, I think you were originally working it like this, and then people had commented, if I'm correct, that there wasn't enough context for the roof, so then you tried to greatly expand upon that. Yeah. But I think that the closer image is actually way more effective. Yeah. I think it is as well, and even though I would have said that, like, well, there's not enough context for the roof. I think if, it's like, this is, like, really close, and, like, this is really far, I think if you maybe just zoomed out on this, maybe, like, 20% or something, to just give a little bit more context here that this is a wall... I think that'll read just fine. Like, Mm -hmm. really just establish that as a wall going like there and that people are climbing up, you know, to it and then give this, like, a little bit of space to breathe up there. Mm -hmm. You're going upwards. That'll that'll work just fine. You don't need to show, like, all this nonsense. I I mean, it's just not needed here, especially since you put your focus and your energy right there. Yeah, and I also feel like the way that you've, like, kind of from a very like abstract perspective, designed like the figures going through the image and created this really nice circular shape. Um, there's something really nice about that that gets mm-hmm. completely lost um, when you zoom out the way you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam, what do you have to add anything? Uh, I'm completely on board with both of you guys. I think All it was right. kind of maybe fun, just pulling out a little bit, but not to the point yeah. where it became just about the building is do we still want to know, we still want to see the story and that, it, it, well, that requires but, you But of course if you're closer. doing like a, a, an online graphic comic, you could start something like this and then mm-hmm. pan in, like you could show a sequence for sure. Yeah, That's almost what it's like. Uh, I would just say the other thing, painting and color wise, this is uh, I don't know if it's a resolution thing on my end, but it def- definitely if I would say to watch out for is like it's feeling very muddy. Um, mm-hmm. So watch edges and then watch all the browns and stuff like have control over the temperature of the color because it Mm -hmm. it shows when you don't have a grasp of the color temperature you're going to get mud yeah and it's hard to say too is like how much of this is like because it's unfinished or how much of it is um you know just not painted a certain bear bear with us folks we're doing our best (laughs) i know because we know it's like some of them are finished some of them didn't get quite finished yeah Um, yeah and we don't know if you ran out of time but I, I would say that you're, you're doing pretty well with surface textures. Um, yeah. Like, I feel like the metal is reading as metal, wood is reading as wood, and um, I think you're doing really good with that. I think it just needs to be pushed and polished. Mm-hmm. Polished. Yep. Ian, welcome to the challenge. So this is yep. cool. I like the, the drawing explorations and the thumb. Like, I like a lot of that. I do, too. I, I very much like this from very much 
from a storytelling. See, RPG this is like the same setup, yeah. yeah, as the dragon picture on the roof, right, with the moonlight, the dark city, the fire in the foreground. But see, now we get the context of the character. Mm -hmm. We also have equal distribution of the weight in terms of yep. the composition as well. So this is like what to do. Mm -hmm. My brush is lagging. Look at it just go. Oh, is that lag? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I'm trying to undo it. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, uh, one of the things I'm noticing here is uh, I would add a little bit of remember, and this is something universal for a lot of a lot of you guys who submitted your work. Remember that light is a tool to illuminate your scene. Use the light whichever way makes your scene look best. Don't think, oh, I have fire there, so I have to light it like that. You're not a victim to the light source. Mm -hmm. You control it. You choose where that light goes, wherever you need it, okay? So in this particular case, the light source favors the giant, but it doesn't really favor the character because he's kind of rimlit, but then we completely lose all the form in his back. So throw another light in there. Just have something off screen that might be now, adding like a little red, bit of light a, to the back a, of his coat. Yeah. yeah, a dark red, green, or blue, or pick up or exaggerate rather yeah. like the moonlight on the cape. Yeah. But this is like I I would say overall really well executed. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I almost I almost kind of like the the double foes with the the hands going out like that on on, mm. on your comp right there a little more. I saw you brought the arm in, but I don't know. I mean, either work. Well, no. well researched. Right? See, like you get a little bit of the texture, everybody else on the ground here to really establish it. that. You know, that's a roof, um, and it's even like, yeah, I like it, and I love the like the the attention to lighting the eye. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, that really, especially yeah. since it's a important focal. Point I would too. In push and enhance the form. I like my biggest deal with this is, is the face. Like the eye is on point, but a lot of the other facial features do get a little bit flatter than perhaps I, I would push them to be. I'd try to like enhance that 3D-ness a little bit more so like establish right a little bit more of like hey this is a top plane this is a bottom mm -hmm. plane. Little things like that I think would really reference Dave Repose's work. He does that lighting very often. Mm -hmm. His stuff is very dimensional. Pops off the page. I'm also noticing kind of an inconsistency of finish. Like, I feel like if you look at the, the, the farther away hand and arm, like, the way that's painted looks fantastic. Like, it feels really, like, researched. It feels well-designed. Like, you get a nice sense of dimensionality and finish to it. But then you look at the hand that's in the foreground, yep. being lit by the fire. Yeah. It feels really kind of muddy and unfinished compared to other parts of the image, like the rest closer. of the giant. Yeah, and so, and also the... the <coughs> You're creating the fire feels unfinished um, when yeah. put next to the rendering of the rest way, of the giant. Yeah, yeah, it's way too over like blown out and overexposed. Like you can have a lot of depth in the color for mm -hmm. your fire. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you for adding that. I think that's yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree. Very ambitious piece for the really tax. Nice. <laughs> this one's fun. Mm, yeah. yeah. Wow, the there's a lot going on here. Looks fun. All right, Tex, this is cool. It's got the I fable like your, vibe going again, on I, here. I like the that. perspective is on point again. I like your, I like to see this drawing and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, the, I actually, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go, go, go. No, I was just going to say, like, comparing the drawing to the painting, the drawing is actually much stronger. Um, I feel like the drawing, you've simplified it in a way and grouped yeah. things in a way that are very quick and easy to read, very graphic. And then when you went into the painting, it became much more noisy, and mm -hmm. you lost a lot of that grouping that you had in the yeah. drawing. You can yeah. get it back, but you're going to have to just fight for it a little bit. Because I 100% agree. You have such a complex you know, scene, right? You have to focus what shape's bouncing off of what shape and yeah. so on. So I just I just selected like that whole area. That's like one example where I personally would try to like really, and this is gonna look janky of course because of the way I selected it. But right, if you set these yeah. elements back, you reduce yeah. the contrast, reduce you know that noise. See like a lot of the stuff in the in for example in the shadows. Then you can start tinting in with like you know blues and 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 uh, greens and stuff like any kind of nighttime you know colors like. See, yeah. we're already like setting that way further back in space, mm -hmm. and it keeps emphasis on these guys that are, you know, much closer to us. Mm -hmm. And that that just takes careful lassoing and and just uh, you know balancing it checks and balances off each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding places where you can simplify it back to those like big light shapes and big dark shapes um, will help a lot. 
But otherwise, I do quite enjoy this piece. It's a lot of fun. You know, I would, I would add just objective, objective observation, right? So don't look at this in terms of characters, golems, uh, 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 hero, etc. Think of this as shapes. It's a bunch of shapes, and you want those shapes to read well, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that the silhouettes are good. Pay attention to tangents, things like that, because if you look through objectively, you'll notice how everything's intersecting everything else, and that's what creates a lot of this visual confusion. But if you just look at these as shapes and objects which you are doing more in your thumbnail, which we tend to do in a thumbnail, um, it's a lot easier to figure to, to resolve a lot of these and make it a lot easier to, to make sense of a very complex scene like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like even like you have those little silhouettes of them on the, the rooftops that are farther away that are just as dark as the ones that are in the foreground. Yeah. Um, like that if you can get those lighter and like the the ones that are in the foreground to not have those areas that get really light keep those like dark dark shapes um and then like it, it's a tiny thing but like the the girl climbing up the um the window um in the thumbnail you only see one side of her framed by the the window which helps to simplify but here you have her framed on both sides by the window which makes her a much more mm -hmm. prominent shape yeah like the eye just gets pulled right here because of that yeah. yellow Yep, yep. And the and the contrast. Yeah. The, this you know, anatomy in there, like a little suspect with the, with how the posing is and how that leg is stretching out to there. But you know, mm -hmm. I I think in the scope of the image, that might you know a smaller fix and and a little less consequential for sure. But yeah. I mean, your idea is there. Just give it another round, you know, and it'll 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 look fantastic, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Like you did the the lighting and the atmosphere and stuff. That's in the drawing. It's all kind of really close. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, Tax. You're really on the right track with this stuff. It really looks nice. Yeah, that was a cool design. Yeah. All right. Dog N. All right. So I think this is another good... This this I think this theme just lent itself well to the Dutch angle, but I think that's this is just enough of that, you know, kind of used pretty well here. Yeah. It's for, for uh, shadowing some tension here. Yeah. It's the anticipation of what's going to happen next, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, the green. There's something about that green that feels... The skin tones actually feel a little bit on the green side, too. Like, there's a color consistency going on. What do you think, guys? Yeah. yeah. Color me, is not working for me. I was going the opposite direction, and I'm like, you have this kind of monochromatic yellow tint to everything with a couple, like, teal pops that are making yeah. it... Yeah. But then, like, you have this red... <laughs> that doesn't like blend, very, yeah. Very like local color red that yeah. is, doesn't seem to be affected by the yellows and teals at all. Um, yeah, so th there's something there that's very incongruous and yeah, not not harmonizing well. I, yeah, I when I put like my hand over the red dress, it seemed to work a little bit better. That yep. red, yeah, it's it's um, mother color. Look up uh, online art academy and look at his video on mother color. He explains it well. Just injecting a little bit of that yellow and blending it into the red will help it harmonize with everything else and make yes. a big difference. The way you fill, the way you've painted this, it's almost like there's like a yellow filter over everything, mm. and so you want it to feel consistent. Like, you know, it, it's almost like a very desaturated painting that's just tinted towards yellows and teals, mm -hmm. which that that red is not cooperating. Yeah, with. It feels. A I like the composition. I love the overall setup. Of, but yeah, the, the colors feel a little quite off. Like the, the skin tones for me aren't really working right there. Uh, like they get a little bit muddy and, and burnt out. You know, like yeah. uh, over, no, under, yeah, underexposed because they're too dark. And it's almost like there's black in a lot of that. And I wouldn't say that's a great use of black as a color in an in a illustration. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the the city uh, composition. What's not working is it gets fairly flat back here, like a lot of that stuff. It, I mean, the colors like for sunset, you're gonna get deep. Like that's one of the most beautiful times of day to really mm -hmm. paint. But your whole sky is like this milky sort of like yellow, and then that's what I think you guys originally were catching on as well. It it's still not really serving this piece best, and the the sky needs a lot of attention. To harmonize, because once the sky dome is in there, that'll dictate the colors, you know, for the mm -hmm. rest of the scene, since that's what the light source is. But mm -hmm. right, yeah, right now, uh, for me, the the sky tones and stuff are just not, not working. 
and I, it would take me a little while, obviously, to, to really fuss with them, but it, the, it's a difficult time of day. Mm -hmm. um, but the colors are deep, and there's a lot of them. You can, I put a video out on that. You can get away with any color at a sunset. Almost. You can put greens up there, you can put blues, you can put purples and pinks. But right now, it's just that it's devoid of all of that. It feels mm -hmm. very I, sterile. I, I'm, my eye is reading this almost as like a black and white image with a tint to it. Yeah, it's basically what my eyes reading as, and yeah. if that's your intent, there there is a place for that. But then it has to be consistent with you know like the red dress and the things like that. And mm. if that's the case, then your teals are going to be your your color pops, and not the red dress. Yeah. Um. And also, I just wanted to mention that there does seem to be like you have some really nice surface textures to, you know, the everything around the girl, but mm -hmm. the girl herself feels very yeah. Uh, Underwear. Yeah. You got to get immaculate yeah. with that since it's first and foremost in our sight, and it's a focal point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say the same thing that you know, in, on that note that you just said there, with just looking at some of these a thumbnail view, like that. That's going to be a situation here, right? That's going to be a situation in here and in here as well. So we, not to like discredit any of these, but but like same thing, right? Is going on with all three of these. You have these characters, right? Everybody that. First and foremost, they're on stage, they're primary actors, but a lot of them ne need that polish, that render, and that, that research, I would say, that to really kind of push them uh, a bit further. So I guess just because this one's in the middle, I'll just open and we'll go with this one so everybody gets their due time. Yeah. Uh, on that note, I, it's something I think that has been consistent throughout where it's like either the figures are done really well and then the environment is lacking or vice versa, but there's not like a consistent level of quality between the two. Mm -hmm. cohesiveness is a struggle mm -hmm. yeah see like a lot of this uh, for me feels very the, the there's lack of edges or lack of edge control in there and it, get, it starts to feel muddy whereas mm -hmm. like I like the storytelling I like the character designs I like the setup of it you know the time of day and everything mm -hmm. but yeah like a, the, the just the overall execution and for me I guess it would be the, the paint uh, the placement you know of that tower is not kind of doing justice to the composition because it's like right at level with this character's head yeah and yes. they're competing the shapes are, yeah if you move it over if you took that same tower and shifted over over the dead character it could add the weight right see like and that kind of, yeah that's a shape that's a shape you know everything you have to look at in terms I of like an abstract I feel like the posing for this is really fighting against any storytelling because you have yeah. this figure kind of standing completely square, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. facing the camera. Um, like Gentle the way smile. they're holding this, this, the sword doesn't make sense. Like you wouldn't hold it that way. But like if you reframed the image, like what if you moved the camera down so then like you're looking up at this figure it would make them way more imposing and then the tower would be even like towering above yeah. them. Or if you were looking down at them, you could kind of like get more of like the guy's facial expression as he's about to be executed or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but like if you if you play more with like the posing and how you set up the scene, you'll get more storytelling out of it. Yeah, yeah, because this character feels like a bit shoehorned very conveniently into that space as mm -hmm. well. Like it's just like a very busy little situation going on. And then mm -hmm. something about the the characters feel way too big here as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I don't I haven't stu I haven't stood on a castle wall recently, but see, like if if the castle walls here are only up to like the shin and knee, that feels a bit low. Like when I was like watching Lord of the Rings, these things were like up this high. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. the the intention is to block arrows, right? Yeah. So like that uh. doesn't that doesn't work from a design standpoint in that regard. But you just need more research and reference, and and, and on that note. But. It does. It takes a lot. Of, like, have fun and get into researching these types of things. Learn about the buildings. Learn about the, the uh, the armor. Get get into the functionality, and it helps to inform your design a lot. It's, it's the, the, one of the, the fun best, things about the our job. Best working illustrators and stuff out there. They're you have to be obsessed about every piece you do, and you have to make it look like you're an expert at whatever you're painting and, and drawing. Yeah. Like that's just like that's just par for the course. You have to come off as an expert, and that's why it's a very difficult field because we almost have to be our own little know-it-alls about whatever we're, we're, we're particularly drawing. Yeah, I, I wanted to say one more thing about this piece, real quick, too. Is I in this piece that suffers again from what's the heart of the piece? And so my question is, who's important in the story? Is yeah. it the, the woman in red, the executioner, or is it the dying person? And the composition right now is telling me that it's the the standing figure. 
um, just because of the pose and how much real estate they take up. But there's something about the lighting and the dramaticness of the dying figure that feels like that should be the mm -hmm. heart of the piece. And there's something there that's way more human and appealing and interesting yeah. than the rest of the image. No, I agree. So maybe zoom in on that. Maybe really like focus on how do you bring this character that's about to die to life. And you've right. done something really nice with the lighting around him. Um, yeah. You could really play up. Yeah. No, I agree. I'd like recompose the shot. So this is like good, like a majority like is about this. And then like this figure would be like a little bit either further away or something like that in the foreground. Mm -hmm. But I make it about that, that figure right there. Cause this is as a moment, that's kind of where I think the draw is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Jonathan, how you doing? This is mirror's edge vibes, mirror's edge yeah, vibes. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say too. Yeah. Uh, the theme song just starts playing in my head. <laughs> So I, I again I think a lot of the the environmental drawing and perspective is looking point. I think mm -hmm. for me it's there's definitely uh, serious situations going on with the characters and motion and stuff. But yeah, this is referenced poses. Uh, this is uh, imagined poses, imagined anatomy, and mm -hmm. it suffers greatly for that. Uh, the fact that you you're trying to make up anatomy from your head, you can't you have to learn it properly, right? So I look at the arms, I look at the breasts, I look at the legs, the hips, the, 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 the cops running, the length of the legs. All of that is all wrong due to the fact that you tried to do it from your head. So don't, there's no reason why you should. All the masters reference, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I would say because it, you have this beautiful perspective for the, for the, in most part to the background, and yeah. then you have these characters where the anatomy is completely Mm -hmm. It's not. It's and that's what it's about. Right? It's about these characters in this yeah. chase. And it's it's so easy. Like get a, get a friend to like stand on a chair like that for you and take sure. a picture. Like it's like it's it's yeah. really easy to get good reference, um, yeah. and you'll benefit a lot from it. Definitely. Even uh, when I had a video I did once where you just get one of those ten dollar gorilla pods you can tie to anything, and it comes with a free, mm -hmm. it comes with a a camera shutter, and you just hook it up to your phone, and you can snap your own shots. You can mm -hmm. pose and snap your own shots very easily that way. So. Definitely reference for sure. I would, yeah, and since the characters are the priority, I would knock back a lot of the detail and shapes. Like, I'd simplify a bit of that even, you know, quite a bit further. Just so they're not going to compete with these uh, characters. Right, so this is like the same thing I did right with the other pieces. Like, you can you could shift and, and use I probably more blues and all the shadows. So I don't think what I'm doing here is like the best way to do that. Because, I mean, you want to reduce contrast, but you want to, like, watch Marco Bucci's 10 Minutes to Better Painting, Episode 1. It's about simplifying and grouping shapes. Yeah, exactly. That's more, like, what has to go on, and that's not, like, that's not, like, a two-second fix that I can just show like that. But that that's, I think, would also enhance a lot of what's going on there. Yeah. But, I mean, other than that, though, I like, like, if these characters were anatomically correct and and looked like rest re like this would be an amazing piece yeah right there yeah mm -hmm. all right next up jefferson jefferson's next all right all right so, so you get right to the story there nice yeah i i, I like how direct this is jefferson mm-hmm it's like fairly simple, straightforward, but for me, I'm going to start off like, why we got half this character cropped out? Yep. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Were you out of pixels and you couldn't like fit him in? Why is he just hanging off the page? We lose his, his wrist, his knee. Very awkward place to crop an image, I must say. You made mm -hmm. me think of the Ikea guy there. Why did you do this? Because you're crazy? Why can't you <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Like, why? What's wrong with you? Come. Blow your blow your Thanks. canvas out a little bit more. Get him in your picture. He's yeah. a main character. Yeah, you want them. In, you want to frame them, not cut them off. Cutting them off deprioritizes him. It makes him feel like he's an extra. He's not an actual part of the story, right? And not only that, but you've juxt you've stuck him right in front of a big dark building. Yeah. So yeah. that again cancels him out. I would put the building out to the side or move it out of the way, but you don't want it to infringe on his space. Because otherwise, if you think compositionally with the other character, the other guy reads beautifully, but then this guy gets crammed over the side. So just move him in so you can see it's a one-on-one -on -one brawl. Mm-hmm. 
And I think this is a case where, like, maybe looking at some photo references of rooftops would be helpful. Um, yeah. Because the roof itself feels really made up. The perspective doesn't make sense. And It, it was making more details. sense here. Yeah. Although I see the same mistake there, right? Of cropping the guy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, is that a 3D render? What is that? Yeah, that's Daz. That's Daz, okay, yeah. So you can see that Daz doesn't fix composition, unfortunately. Yeah. No, no, it just helps with lighting <laughs> and character. So you, so you have to get your composition and what you want to often figure out first before yeah. jumping to Daz, because that'll really help. I, I do think that the um, the figure that is working, um, the, the 3D model did help, like the posing and stuff um, does read much better. Than and this the rest is one of, of those it. situations with Daz, like if your character is posed like this and there's foreshortening on the arm, you got to kind of compensate for that, like have the arm come out a yeah. little bit further, yeah. make it yeah. a little bit, but this is what Daz won't do. And yeah. if you've drawn enough figures, this is like, like this is like one of the old, it's a trick. You have to exaggerate it to make it feel very dimensional. Like when we draw environments, we exaggerate the distance because mm -hmm. it's a 2D plane. We have to put that depth in it. Yeah. And I think too, uh, looking at the um, the one the the image beneath it, and then the final image, one of the things that's working is more that the the rooftop has an end, whereas in I think that's the a final painting, it it's just this like shape that fills the entire bottom of the image but if you actually felt like he was at the edge it's, i think it's too exaggerated in the one at the bottom but if you felt like he was at the edge of the roof if you felt like there was like a sh like you created a peak there mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. to just had it keep going yeah. it would create more tension in the image he's at the edge of the roof like he has to fight his way back onto the roof i would um, set it up like this i'd have a character there and then like a character you know in here yeah mm -hmm. Like a little bit smaller for sure but see like everything's framed and then you like if you have a building back there you could either just you know stick it off like going you know something like that or or the, then design the mountains in a way so that they're working abstractly you know with the yeah. shapes but that's how you got to think about it you got to think about it in very bold simple shapes mm -hmm. and then do the tr construction drawing and then go to 3d and then whatever additional references you'd need and, and that right. will help work through those problems systematically and I think too, like the guy that's in the foreground that's not working, turn him. Like you should see that guy's back. Like obviously, the, the guy with the green is the the focal point of the image. And I see that you've done a lot of things to try to subordinate that other figure by framing him with the black and cutting him off. But it would be more effective to subordinate him by just showing his back instead mm -hmm. of um, his front, because then you're going to pay attention to the guy that you see his face and you see mm -hmm. like all of that detail on. Yeah. All right. Cool. I think this is officially kind of like last up. We have this totally screams Game of Thrones to me. Justin <laughs> Gordon, yeah, this is cool, Justin. I, I like the angle of the rain here. Look at how the soft, desaturated tones. Yet there, uh, there are there are colors there. How well that reads. Yep. Notice how the lack of saturation. Don't even think about it, Link. He wants to eat my wife. Yeah, this is like subtlety done well. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it, it, it adds to that realism feel. And you notice the little subtle bit of red. It's a very soft, blued red. And then you have the fire really punches because everything else has been toned down. So we know exactly where we're supposed to look, right? If, if I had to do anything differently with this, it would be kind of either like the positioning or like how yeah. these creatures are presented to us as the viewer. Because like... That's what they're. This scene is really about these freaking ugly ass creatures. So like for like this one, I'd have it up like up here so we can really see it, because we really only see like yes. the head, oh, yes. of, and then like the side of one. Mm -hmm. Like I'd, I'd want one full on display. Like I want spikes, more of that. Yeah, like, the legs. It's like it's a missed opportunity. Not that you can't go back and fix it, but like really play the, do these guys those justice. They're yeah right out of Dark Souls. Oh yeah, they're very satisfying designs. I'm really digging it. I want, I want more. I feel, I feel like I've been shortchanged. I want more of that. So mm -hmm. definitely. And I would, I would say the posing of the main one that's lighting the whole scene um, could use some work because the pose of it, I'm having trouble understanding. There's a clarity issue, mm -hmm. and I don't think that it's showcasing that creature mm -hmm. design effectively. Yeah. Yeah. And since that's the focal point of the image, um, I think that that should really be the part that shines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And have him, I would have him look towards 
the mm-hmm. charging soldiers too, because it kind of seems to be ignoring them the a head, little bit. The head should right? be turned. Imagine if that head was turned right there, yeah. and this guy was standing up, and then you got like a nice little bit of subtle illumination. Not that I'm drawing this subtly, but you, you see some of these forms on the building, yeah. and you know, subtly get illuminated by this dude's belly and shit. Like, that'll yeah. look awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then you could do more with the body language. Like, if he's, like, he's leaned over like that, but, like, his head's down, but he's, like, looking at them, it would be so much more menacing than him just, like, crawling across the walkway. Yeah, and it'll kind of give him that kind of cat about-to-pounce type of look with the spikes coming out of his back. Looks like spiky fur. I would also, the whole right side where you have the mountain and the lightning clap, I would I'd be tempted to cut into that a little bit because it seems to be kind of adding. It's taking away with a bit too much negative space. I don't know. What do you guys think yeah. about that? Yeah, I, I would say on both sides of the the focal point, I feel like there's some a lot of dead space. That's like not. yeah, like up here, like I I do more with the sky. There's a lot mm-hmm. of big yep. like yeah, uh, kind of ugly brushwork up there. That's again taking away. Maybe in, in, if you have a one lightning here. Yeah, have a couple light. subtle okay. notes of that lightning to to mirror and help that rhythm mm-hmm. and that scale. You know, not so they're taking away from that, but you need to. It needs a balance, and then maybe the, I think the sword's way too light and needs some work right there too. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I mean, this is really cool though, and it's it is close, but yeah, yeah. awesome. Notice job. again here, just to, compared to the last piece we were looking at. Notice how. The soldier who's pointing his sword in the foreground, how is because his shoulder's been cut out, we we don't see him as being a main actor. Yeah, he's right? like a framing element at best. Exactly. Yeah. So just and something I to think, take note of. I think that would be helped even more if like the sword was like dialed way back and you maybe just got some rim yeah, lighting. It, yeah. It's it's way too loud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of infringing on the on the monster like a little a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And really, really nice though. Really Very cool good. design though. I really yeah. like that one. What do we got? Our last one here. Well, yeah, that was that was mine. Nothing special. I'll just show oh, it. you. We, did don't that. To, we don't need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk. Okay, about thank it, you but. for putting your name on it this time, Tyler. Yeah, I have my name on it. Uh, I was thinking, uh, you know what? You can't. You can't. You can't do that, man. It's it's you can't use three D to replace artistic skill. I'm afraid. <laughs> right. Daz yeah. isn't going to do the work for you, mate. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to put in your own your own. I work used here. all the cheats. All the cheats. <laughs> well, okay, check it out. You see how the rain adds to the piece? Little accents of rain. It's not completely overpowering the piece. This is a very I good stuck example. them under an underpass for that reason. I could just use rain as an option on the outside. Yeah. And look how and he still has the wet floor. He still mm-hmm. has the reflections. Uh, this can... took a lot of planning. Like it was exhausting. I'm not going to try to shortchange anybody, but like I was exhausted from doing this. Like all that mm-hmm. planning is like way more than I normally do, and it was exhausting. But you can see how uh, how funny enough this actually serves as a good example for a lot of the comments we made on several other pieces, doesn't it? In terms of silhouetting the characters, creating clarity, the rule of thirds, the, the... surface detail. The... Yeah, the, the yeah 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 yeah. I've been it's, around the block a few times. <laughs> been around, the, yeah. Very, very cool. But yep, that was my piece. Everybody it was fun to kind of quasi participate. Uh, we'll I, be right back with our favorites. Yeah. All right. Pause. So. All right, everybody, we're back. This is each of our favorites. We each kind of just picked one. We'll kind of go at it in that format for the time being. I I like Yuri's, and uh, Jessica, you like Ming's. And mm-hmm. Adam liked the penance, so yeah, really good stuff, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Can... it was it was hard to choose. There were a lot of really cool pieces too. Mm-hmm. A lot of like honorable mentions. I'd basically honorably mention every other one. <laughs> They're <laughs> yeah. really nice. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You guys yep. really go out of your way. And anything else that you guys want to add before we call it a day? Uh, no. I think I, that I, I thought. Think... I, I think one of the things I mentioned when the, the recording was paused with like I was really surprised at how good the perspective was on a lot of these because it was a really challenging subject and a lot of people really went out of their way to do good reference really good perspective get, per, good perspective yeah so. and I think the biggest thing we as we were talking about as well when we were we had a pause was like that the, I think the quality control in, re- in regards to the brushwork and the level of finish was the biggest thing that we saw holding mm-hmm. most of the pieces down this mm-hmm. this particular challenge 
Yeah, yeah. But yeah. really cool pieces. Really beautiful. Guys, you, you go so out of your way yep. uh, just for the sake of contributing to the competition. What can we say? You know, it's it's humbling and it's a lot of fun. And so I, will, I, I will add in the, uh, the next challenge right after this, so stay tuned. Awesome. Right. Congratulations, nice. guys. <laughs> Stop. Hello, everybody. Uh, the next challenge is going to be due April 22nd, and the theme is Dragon Rider or dragon and the rider. So let's depict the dragon and maybe get the rider in and maybe establish perhaps a little bit of what that relationship is. Is it more of like a pet? Is it a friend? Is it is is the creature enslaved? Let, let's explore some options, do some illustrations and have a good time. <laughs>